What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the podcast. Hope you're all doing well. This is the Cleveland Pulse podcast, episode 16. As always, I am your host, Justin Harold, and with me today, as always, is my co-host, Jeff Santa. Uh, we're going into week six now. I was going to say five, but this is week six. The Cleveland Browns are going to be playing the Pittsburgh Steelers in possibly the biggest game of the Browns season uh, thus far and probably for the Steelers as well. Um, there's a lot to cover, so we'll kind of get right into it. But first, Jeff, how you doing, my friend? Good, buddy. But just like you said, you know, biggest game for, for both teams, most definitely. Steelers still, you know, one of the remaining undefeated teams in the AFC. Um, Brownies with only one loss, you know, should be a, a clash of the Titans at Heinz Field this weekend. Yeah, and speaking of the Titans, uh, that's the one game that, you know, the Steelers were supposed to have and haven't played because of COVID testing with the Titans team, um, who's a very good team and probably would have been the best team that the Steelers had faced up until us. And so we'll start off with that point. We'll start by talking about, you know, the Browns have, you know, they played better competition than the Steelers thus far. Obviously, we played um, the Ravens and the Colts, who are better than the teams that the Pittsburgh Steelers have played because the the total or the what should I say the records of those teams combined is 315 and one so obviously you can tell that those teams were not very good um they're still not very good and so really quickly I will just share my screen to show you those teams so I'll zoom in a little bit for you guys but as you can see here their first game was against the Giants then the Broncos, then the Texans, then the Eagles. This Titans game was supposed to happen, I think, here maybe, but – or the week before this. Yeah. So, but now we got this game coming up, which will be the best game in week six, I believe. But let's talk about these opponents really quickly and just, you know, Jeff, I'm not going to ask you to, you know, recall these games, but I think me and you have talked about – the Giants game a little bit and the Steelers game and obviously the Eagles game was last week so maybe you caught a little bit of that but what are your thoughts on their their first four opponents with the you know them being 4-0 against them so honestly they've done their job i mean if you're if you're a Steelers fan uh you have to be 4-0 through those you know four games if big ben you know stays healthy of course and looks back to normal which he has i'm going to give my I'm gonna tip my cap to him early give him props you know right from the get go he's played good um he he knows how to run that offense he knows how to get people involved so i mean 4-0 that's where they should be um what I've noticed is that they really like to play to their level of competition. I feel like they, they have the past couple of years. Uh, and th those teams, you know, the Texans record is, uh, I believe they're one and four, which is not very good, but they've played some of the premier teams in the league. Um, they played the Chiefs, and I believe they've also played Baltimore. So yep. that's a pretty tough draw for them off the rip. Being one and four, you know, that's upsetting because they were a playoff squad last year. But they've had some some problems over there. Um, the Eagles game is what stands out to me the most just because that game was at Heinz Field. Um, that's the one of the worst defensive games I've seen the Steelers play, um, probably with it, including every single game last year and the four games to start this year, solely because I'm not a huge Carson Wentz believer. And, you know, no Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey for the Eagles in that game. Uh, two rookie wide receivers were running wild against the Steelers defense. So I think that's probably the biggest talking point uh, of their season so far. Yeah, and so obviously for me, looking back at some of these games, I watched the Giants game and the Steelers game because I believe that was Monday night. Um, it was a primetime game of some sort. I do not yep. remember for sure. And I watched the Broncos-Steelers game. And so these two games stick out to me the most because these are by far the two worst teams that they've played. And, you know, they've only won by a margin of 10 or double, di double digits. And that was against the Giants who, you know, they're the worst team. They're 0-5 right now. But they kept it within 10 points of the Steelers. And to your point about just them playing to the level of their competition is very, you know, it's very apparent in these scores, I think. Um, I think 
the thing I'm very surprised about is that the defense for the Steelers is kind of, I don't know, you know, 16 points is the fewest that they allowed. And then they allowed 21 two 21 games and then 29. Um, you know, the defense is the thing that scares me the most about the Steelers um, compared to their offense, mainly because their front seven is unlike any other front seven that the Browns have gone up against since. Um Bud Dupree and TJ Watt are a very good tandem on the edges. And um, Cam Hayward is a destructive force in the middle. So our front five is going to have probably the toughest test that it's had to this date. And so it's, it's surprised me that teams have been able to score not at will, but, you know, at least three touchdowns a game besides the giants game, which in realistically they should have got, to at least 21 points because Daniel Jones threw an interception to Cam Hayward, like on the goal line, he threw the worst football I've ever seen. (laughs) Um, But that's besides the point. The Steelers team, to me, I'm not very impressed with. Um, I've watched them. I've, you know, I've watched Ben Roethlisberger and he's not as bad, but I don't give him that much credit because I think he's in that Philip Rivers kind of category right now where he's kind of on the downswing in his career and the balls that he's throwing deep aren't very accurate. And I'm interested to see how they do because, you know, we've talked about week in and week out with opponents against us is that, you know, all they have to do is really attack the middle of our our defense. And, you know, Ben Roethlisberger with dinking and dunking like he has, I think he'll be able to do that. Right. Uh, I agree with you to the to the deep ball point. But I mean, I still think that they have solely just because they have Mike Tomlin, you know, him and Big Ben have worked together for so long. Um, they have playmakers uh, in their wide receiving core. I mean, this Chase Claypool kid um, who wasn't I felt like wasn't on a lot of people's radars is looking like a stud Four touchdowns last week. So I think he's going to be the number one priority for for our defense to worry about. Um, they're just a, they're a lot more one dimensional on the offensive side of the ball than you know they have been in the past. Their running game with James Conner and Benny Snell, I mean, it's it's good enough to win them games, but it's not it hasn't been great yet. But that's where you know their defense comes into play. I think the most impressive stat from their defense was um, how many rushing yards they held Saquon Barkley to in that Giants game, and you know. I mean, I like to call it I, – I have this term that I use. It's called Lur's luck, which is kind of like, you know, me just being like somewhat of an upset Browns fan at some points. But so, obviously, they play good against the Giants. Um, they, they shut down Saquon Barkley. They – Drew Locke gets hurt in the first half of the game against Denver, and that Denver team was already banged up. And the Eagles squad, you know, not being at full capacity on the offensive side, and now they're running into us – at Heinz Field, you know, it would be awesome if Wyatt Teller was 100%. Obviously, we don't have Nick Chubb. OBJ gets sent home already during this week with the illness. So, I mean, they're they're obviously a great football team, but I just feel like they catch more luck than anybody else in the league, probably just because I follow them the most outside of the Browns because of, you know, being in Pittsburgh for school and everything. But, I mean, they just get so lucky sometimes. It just boggles my mind. Yeah, and, you know, I'm looking at stats right now. And so what will probably be the most surprising stat is that at the bottom of the league, or at least for what the NFL shows right now, Baker Mayfield and Ben Roethlisberger almost right next to each other in terms of passing stats, which is very surprising. Um, Maybe to me because I think of the Steelers as more of a passing team than us because, you know, we run so much – we run the ball so much and we do a lot of um, the bootleg out of that, but you know, Ben Roethlisberger only has 1,016 yards. Baker Mayfield has 976 yards. And that's with, that's with one whole game played ahead of Ben Roethlisberger, but you know, Ben has 10 touchdowns and one interception, which is probably the most, you know, notable thing about his uh, return from injury is that he's only thrown the one interception. I usually associate, uh, big Ben with, you know, he's a big risk taker. And I think that's been pretty apparent that he's been the opposite of that this season with his uh, turnover ratio compared to Baker Mayfield's or anyone else in the NFL, really. So, and then I go to rushing stats. And the funny thing is uh, Kareem Hunt 
and Nick Chubb are still ahead of um, James Conner by like a good amount by like uh, Nick Chubb is ahead of him by like almost 50 plus yards and Kareem Hunt's over a hundred plus yards for him. So um, their offense really, really just doesn't impress me. You know, I think Juju is still their best wide receiver, even though, you know, Claypool, he had four touchdowns last week, but he's really kind of come out of nowhere with that. But I just, I don't know that I'm too worried about their offense. I'm more worried about how our offense will do against their defense, if anything. Right. Yeah. I, th- I think that's the, uh, I think the, the running game on both sides is the focal point for me, just because of how good their run defense is coupled with their ability to get in the backfield to the quarterback. Um, it's going to be a big game for Kareem Hunt, in my opinion, you know, just to see how he plays. I really think he's, if I had to name one player to watch this whole week, it would probably be either him or Baker. Um, for obvious reasons, but just because I'm assuming Kareem to probably be the healthiest player on our offense, uh, you know, outside of our tight ends, which is kind of, you know, upsetting to say just because uh, obviously we know Chubb's hurt, OBJ, you know, he's going to be a question mark, I assume, unless, you know, more news comes out today. And Landry and Baker obviously banged up with, you know, dealing with rib injuries. Um, And I just think that hopefully him being the healthiest player, you know, should prove well for our offense. I don't want Stefanski to get away from the run. Um, even if it's not successful in the first half, because, you know, they have, they gave up 80 yard touchdown run to Miles Sanders last week um, against Philly. So, I mean, there's big play potential. And I saw a lot of big plays given up by their defense last week. Yeah. So you talk about Kareem being the big point or your big, like, who's going to be the person to watch in this game. And to be honest with you, I had someone, one of our friends, uh, Danny Gutierrez, asking like a group message to, uh, yesterday, you know, has Baker been like playing well or something to that extent? And so for me, I'm, I got everything Baker right now. Um, you know, this, this season so far hasn't, has like encompassed everything that I thought our offense would be except for, the Baker Mayfield having a signature game. And so, you you know, we're five games into this season going into six. Last week I said people need to get off Baker's back about, you know, you know, he's only throwing for like 200 yards a game or for so little completions or whatever it is. You know, he had an interception last week, um, went two weeks before that without throwing an interception. People still weren't happy with him. You know, for me, this is kind of like, for some reason, the narrative for the Steelers Browns game it's it's huge because of so many so many different things. You know, we have the incident with Miles Garrett last season with him and Mason Rudolph, and you just have the history of the Browns versus Steelers being a, if not the biggest rivalry in NFL in like you know the history of the game, then one of the biggest. And you know, for the first time in years and years and years the Browns are a very competitive team four and one you can't say that we've been this good in a very long time since you and me have been alive so the competition really feels like you know there's something there now and that you know there's something to kind of get like uppity about and kind of get really excited about so for me you know it it went from Miles Garrett is going to be the focal point of this game to, oh, maybe it's going to be the run game again to now for me, it's Baker Mayfield and, you know, Cam Hayward. Uh, that's right. Right. That's Cam Hayward. Am I saying that right? Where when last year? No, this year, like Cam Hayward. Uh, he said something to the media this week about, you know, they asked him, you know, Baker Mayfield, he's hurting and stuff. And like, what are your, th- what are your guys thoughts on that? And he's like, Oh, like, we're gonna, like, we're gonna make sure to inflict good damage on him. And like Kareem came out and said that, you know, this game is for miles, but then Joe Batonio came out. He's like, you know, they issued out like a full on, like we're going to come after Baker Mayfield challenge. And for me, that's like, all right, well, Baker Mayfield's got to come back being hurt and everything and kind of just have like the biggest game of his I'm going to say his season and his career 
It's got to be. It's got to be. It's going to be, you know, huge. He's got to do things that, you know, we haven't asked him really to do yet this season. And I think that's going to be the big point. I think I did not hear that Cam Hayward, you know, what you're talking about, um, which is interesting because I felt like I would have heard about that. But I th- just think, you know, I mean, same goes for us. Like we're going to be coming after Big Ben. I don't know why every team in the league isn't going after him, you know, sending blitz packages and, and what have you. I mean, even if it's not clean football, even if it's a 15 yard penalty, I don't know why you wouldn't. It's like. I mean, he could have, I mean, obviously any player in the league, one, you know, one bad tackle or one bad, big hit and, you know, you could be out for the season, but especially with him being older and just the fact last year that, you know, you maybe you don't have like, like you said, you're not very high on their offense, but just from watching, you know, Big Ben not playing last year and the original point that you brought up of him only having one interception, I think that's just the biggest turnaround for the Steelers squad is that they've secured the ball. On, they have one interception and one fumble, I think, on the offensive side. And that's really, you know, the clean football that they've played on that side of the ball has really been impressive considering, you know, Big Ben's history of liking to take risks. But I just think the overall mantra is limiting the risk with Big Ben. You know, they don't want him. Last week I did see him stand in the pocket for a long time, and he he better be careful about doing that this week because – we're going to be on them. But, you know, the whole Baker Mayfield talking point is that, you know, if, if Big Ben interceptions were up, then I don't think it would be as, you know, looked upon as a matchup. But Baker's really going to have to grind and work through this injury in order to outplay Big Ben. And if he does that this week, I think there's a very good chance that we win the ball game. Jeff, let me issue a quick question to you that, you know, we don't have to stick on to it very long, but, you know, obviously Baker Mayfield being hurt, there is a question of, you know, is he, is Kevin Stefanski going to let him play through this injury or do you think he's going to take that chance to, it's hard to like even try to like establish this as a question because you can put it so many different ways. Is Kevin Stefanski going to make, uh, Keenum the starter because he wants to protect Baker from getting hurt anymore or is he going to like t- like how I was going to phrase it the first time is he going to take a chance and kind of start Keenum and you know if Keenum goes and has a, like a really good game and kind of just like propels himself in a place that Baker hasn't gone to yet this season do you think there's a chance that they would do that with Keenum and maybe roll with him going on in the future I think the the practice news and your injury report news today is going to probably be the biggest indicator of that. Um, if I had to guess and, you know, put my money on something, I have Baker Mayfield starting this game. And, you know, just because of how the last game ended, the first sign of discomfort or, you know, something's wrong when we see him, you know, maybe hunched over or Winston or something, he's getting taken out in case Keenum goes into this game. Uh, Just because this, not trying to be a pessimist, but I don't really think this is a game like a lot of people think we should win. Um, I know obviously it would be a great one to win, but going into Heinz, you know, they have their fans back to some extent. So um, I, I would really love to split with the Steelers. And I think this is a big game to where, if we could beat them now and have a chance to sweep them at first energy, I mean, that's just the most ideal scenario. But I think with the current situation of our team and kind of just how unlucky we've been with injuries and how healthy they actually are, I don't even know of anyone on their roster who's dealing with anything, maybe one of their offensive linemen, but that's about it. But I think Baker, Baker too much of a gamer to, to sit this one out. Yeah, and I, I just – I've been – the reason I asked you that question was because I was trying to pull up the injury report and find it in Bleacher Report. So, like you said, they're they're healthy over in Pittsburgh. Besides their – I believe they're starting right or left guard of yeah. DeCastro. I think yeah. he's done or he's, you know, he's out for a while because he did not practice uh, either practices this past week. Um, and I think I heard something about him just like he's not going to be able to play for this game. But then you go and you look over on our side of the field and, you know, we have dudes who are, you know, fully did not practice, did not practice, limited, 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 did not practice. There's so many guys on this um, Browns depth chart that, you know, OBJ is probably the biggest question, mainly because, you know, he's not hurt, but 
we played Indianapolis this past weekend. Uh, they had to shut down their facility because of COVID positive tests. Uh, Beckham goes home with an illness yesterday. Uh, that's scary because it would be really, really important for him to be in this game. Um, I'm just trying to go down the list. Harrison, uh, Ronnie Harrison, you know, safety. He is still in concussion protocol, but I think they're hopeful that they'll get him back for this game, which would be huge. Kareem, you know, he's been dealing with a thigh injury, but, you know, he's going to be fine. Kevin Johnson, uh, not injury related, so that's okay, I think. Carl Joseph still hasn't practiced. He's probably not going to play in this game. Uh, Jarvis, like you said earlier, he's been dealing with a uh, hip and rib issues. He didn't practice. Baker with a chest injury. He's been limited for both practices. Larry has been limited for both practices. So I think he'll be back, which is a very good thing. Jacob Phillips has not practiced. Sheldon Richardson was limited in full. He's good. Wyatt Teller is, did not practice for two. And yeah, I mean, I just listed off like everything that was on that report, but yeah, we're, we're pretty banged up. And I think we've been pretty banged up for the majority of the season but we still managed to play, you know, really well on the offensive side of the ball um, four weeks now of 30 plus points, which I never expected, but, you know, watching the Steelers and their defense, I just, I think, you know, if you can keep Baker clean and a lot of that's going to have to do with the play calling. Um, I think Baker plays and I think Baker has a big day. I think he, I think he nickel and dimes people this week. I think you're going to have a completion percentage of upper 60s, lower 70s, which would be really good. No interceptions. And I've just had it pictured in my mind. And this is if Odell is able to play and everything. But I just have this picture in my head of a play where we're on the left side of the field. We bootleg Baker out right. Odell's far right. He does like a, a nine yard comeback, fake comeback, then turns it upfield and goes for like a 60 yard touchdown. I don't know why I have that in my head. I was like thinking about it all last night for some reason, probably just because the podcast was up and coming, but I think this is going to be a, a signature Baker Mayfield game. He hasn't been very good against the Steelers in general, but I think that changes this week. So but we've talked a lot about the offense. Um, Jeff, what are you thinking in terms of our defense against their offense? So I think I think we've done, you know, a pretty good job holding teams offensively as far as rushing yards. Um, I know John, it seemed like Jonathan Taylor had a good week against us last week. It wasn't like anything, you know, stellar out of the ordinary. Um, but their their running backs just aren't that good. James Conner is is really not that good, which is uh, I don't mean to get you all fired up in the morning, but which is actually pretty ironic because, you know, they did have Lev Bell a couple years ago and let him walk. Thanks. Another thing we could thank the Steelers for for that complete nonsense should have just paid him. Yeah, the. What is and, that about? What are the Chiefs? Are the Chiefs the new Warriors? Yes. All right, yes, yes, exactly. I never. All right. Did you see my tweet last night? Maybe one I saw most some of them. I, I tweeted, I was like, I never want to hear oh, anyone yeah. say yeah. that Patrick Mahomes is the face of the NFL ever again. Someone argue me on that point because the dude has had it, he has had the easiest road to success in the NFL of any like big name quarterback that you can think of. Like, I can't think of a single single quarterback that has had it easier than Patrick Mahomes. And I'd be like, right. I think anyone would be hard pressed to like make an argument out of that. Not since we've been alive. Yeah, probably. I don't. Even, yeah, I don't even know. It's probably not even like a real discussion because I don't think there's a one person who can. I'm trying to think of like rookie quarter or the closest person, and they're not even doing that well right now is Kyler Murray because Kyler Murray has gotten like a really good wide receiver. He's gotten two really good wide receivers. I mean, he has a, he has a first ballot hall of famer and Deandre Hopkins um, and his running, his running back is good, but Patrick Mahomes off topic, off topic. Um, <laughs> now I'm getting riled up about it, but yeah, I mean, their run game, I don't expect anyone to be, you know, 
going to run the ball really well on us. I expected the Ravens to, and even then they didn't really do it that well. And we've been keeping, you know, rushers and teams under a hundred yards for every week so far. And so I think that's going to continue. My biggest worry is the passing game and, you know, they got a lot of talent in that wide receiver slash tight end core. And that's probably my biggest area of concern, especially with Ronnie Harrison, potentially like, you know, He's our second string strong safety. And, you know, Carl Joseph is also out. If he doesn't play, we're going to have to play Sandejo at strong safety and Redwine at free safety, which isn't awful. But, you know, those right. guys are – they play the, they play free safety for a reason. And Sheldrick Redwine came in, you know, as like a third stringer for a reason. So, yeah, I just think – I mean I- – Sandejo is obviously the biggest, you know, if Sandejo can make one play, like I'm going to be thrilled with the outcome of our defense. Um, Once again, not worried about the running game, but I'm just a little bit concerned about how our defense, I mean, I know Miles Garrett, Miles Garrett, you know, hopefully we have Larry back and Olivier Vernon need to be, you know, top of their game. And, and even like our rotations defensively are going to have to be, you know, prim and proper just in, in order to hopefully be able to generate a way for a takeaway just because this Steelers offense with only two turnovers through, you know, four games, um, you know, that's pretty good. That's pretty impressive. So, and that's kind of what our defense has really done well, at, you know, as a sense of turning it over to our offense. But I mean, any way we could generate pressures on the quarterback is going to be a positive. Any way we could, you know, hits on Big Ben, sack, sacks is if we could sack him. I mean, it's going to be a long game for him, especially if he's going to have to throw a lot if our run defense is good. But you know, just trying to generate that the one or two turnovers we've kind of been averaging like a game is you know going to be my biggest you know point of concern. Yeah, I think Miles missed out on a strip sack last weekend, but I think he gets it. I think he gets started on that again I think it's very likely because of how well um Ben Roethlisberger has been you know staying in the pocket in the past he's like to run it a little bit but he's standing in the pocket um the only problem will be with coverage and so you know if he's just nickel and diming all game and he's just you know thinking and dunking we're gonna not be able to get to him and not be able to create that kind of pressure so our our coverage is gonna have to be kind of spectacular this this game and you know Kevin Johnson Terrence Mitchell and Denzel are you know really great coverage guys you know I'd press them I'd man press them against all three of their wide receivers the entire of the game and then you know you're gonna have to either free up that free safety or Sandejo to cover uh, Eric Ebron and it's just, you know, it's going to have to be an all around, you know, no, no phase of the football game, special teams, offense or defense has any room to make, you know, major or fatal consistent errors. And so if that's coverage, that's got to get shored up at some point. And if you got to put certain people in there to be coverage people, then do that because I think that's the only area that's going to be, you know, when we're watching the game, we're going to be, oh God, if we could just do this one thing right, this game would probably not even be close. And so I'm really interested to see. It's going to be, I think, a story of offense for me. I think it's going to be somewhere up in the 20s. I think it's like a, it's going to be such a close game, in my opinion. It's going to be closer than any game has been um, probably since the fourth quarter of that Dallas game. I'm going to I'm going to chalk it up to 2827 Browns. Okay, 2827. Yeah, I think it's going to be I don't know, man. Our offense is just so banged up, I feel like, but I think we find ways to to get in the end zone or just to put points up on the board. Uh I really like your point about having like a a really bad air on the special teams because they do they do the special teams well. Ray Ray McLeod has played actually pretty well for them um, compared to last year. They've actually got good value off of punt returns and and kickoff returns, I feel like, compared to what we saw with Switzer last year. But mm, I think it's close to – I give them a slight edge. I give our defense actually a slight edge, believe it or not. Um, I think we, I get, we give, if we had a hundred percent, if we had Chubb, that's why I'm so mad, man. If we had Chubb, I think we smoke them, honestly, if we have Chubb, just because 
we had their run defense has been so good all year, but they haven't played two backs like Kareem and, and Chubb. If Dearness Johnson could, you know, have a, like a big game somewhere out of nowhere and, and Kareem has a good game, um, I think we smoke them too, but I don't really see that happening. I got 26 23 Steelers just because I predicted as a loss pre preseason. I'm changing my prediction. I'm going 31 28 Browns. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking Denzel gets an interception. I'm thinking Miles Whoever Garrett, has the biggest turnover, like whoever has the turnover at the right time, I think also wins the game. Yeah, I'm thinking, and I think, you know, I'm going to say, I'm going to put my stat line out there right now. I'm going to have Denzel with an interception because his first game against in the NFL against Ben Roethlisberger uh, had an interception, had a crazy day that first game. So I think he's going to he's gonna pick Ben off once on like a deep ball that he – for some reason, chances with Denzel. Uh, I think Miles Garrett is going to get two sacks, one of strip sack with a fumble. I don't know that we recover it. I think we force it, but uh, hopefully we recover it as well. And then I'm going to say Baker Mayfield ends the day with 37 attempts throwing the ball, and he is – he completes 24 of those, 24 of 37 for 300 and like – 20 yards and three touchdowns and one interception versus Ben Roethlisberger who throws for 35 times two inter or one interception, one fumble and two touchdowns. So stat lines with prediction is what I got over here. I'm honestly super excited for this game. It's, it's going to renew the, the rivalry of which, you know, a lot of people I know of, for some reason, really like college football compared to the NFL, right. which I've never really figured that out. Um, I go to Ohio State and, you know, we have <laughs> arguably the best college football team um, ever and also one of the best rivalries ever. And I still cannot compare how hyped I get for Browns games compared to the occasional like Michigan game because Michigan has been so bad. And maybe that's how Steelers fans have felt about like the Browns games. Um, but I'm honestly so jacked up for this game and Sunday can't come soon enough. And I'm surprised that they didn't like flex this game to be, I know, you know, last game of the season at home for the Browns versus the Steelers primetime game um, that could decide, you know, a wild card place or maybe even an AFC uh, North victor, but this game's huge and I'm super pumped for it. And, you know, you live in Pittsburgh and you probably live in a house full of um, pissy Pittsburgh's fans, but you know, it is what it is. And I honestly can't wait for Sunday to be here. Yeah. I just think, I mean, if you look at the landscape of the AFC North, you know, we're the most competitive division in the NFL right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have the highest win percentage, you know, in the NFL. So Besides I mean, the Bengals. The Thanks. Ravens. Thank you, Cincinnati. Yeah, they're nah, – they'll be all right. But the Ravens going into Philadelphia. I mean, Philadelphia just played the Steelers close last week. And, you know, I think the biggest thing here for fans of both teams and especially the Browns is that, you know, we split with them last year and we smoked them at first energy. And, you know, obviously the, the my whole mile situation. But if we win this game, this is this is just – this is a huge win. This is the hugest win. This is the hugest win of football, if uh, you know, if so, that we've ever seen. I mean, there's a good chance if we win this game that we go – that we go into first place um, in the division. I think the Ravens struggle this week. Don't know why. I just have a weird feeling about it. But I think, you know, Ravens lose, we win. I mean, that's we have one more game played than the Steelers, too. And I think that's the biggest thing. And I don't want to jinx it, but because OBJ illness and Colts, you know, facility down. But this game just needs to be played. Um, I'm cool with this game being played and the Browns losing compared to not being played at all. Just because the NFL's already flexed the Steelers by and they haven't played good teams like we talked about. So they're uh, – you know, they're undefeated. That's cool and all, but they haven't really played the bulk of their hard schedule and they don't have a bye the rest of the year. We need this game to be played and I think it's going to be a good one. Yeah, it's almost a turning point in the season for both teams. I don't think that it negatively swings the Browns um, if they lose here because obviously yeah. it's a way we're very hurt right now. Um, but I think, you know, for the flip side of that, if, you know, we win this game, 
that's huge. The momentum that we are we are currently carrying with four wins in a row. You turn that into five, and you you know you turn that against a top ten team, a arguably playoff team. Um, you renew the rivalry of the Browns and Steelers by winning this game at Heinz Field. The momentum is just going to be crazy for the Browns. And, you know, people talk about the Browns beating the Ravens last year. And, you know, from that point on, the Ravens never lost a game again. You know, I don't think we get to that kind of point, but I think momentum is such a huge thing. And this game is just I, I can't like, I can't describe it. I can't describe it. I wish I could be there um, with COVID and everything. I know that, you know, they're going to have limited fans and everything, but um, I joked about going last year after miles had like swung the helmet and everything. I would legit go to this game. I would buy nosebleeds just to be there for the chance of this rivalry being completely renewed. Um, it's, it's going to be big. It's just, I'm like Monumental. nervous. I have like nervous jitters, but like I, I agree with what you're saying though. I feel like we don't really have as much to lose, just because we're away. If it would, if it'd be a first energy, I'd be yeah. even more nervous. But I mean, I would also be more comforted that we have, you know, fans. I don't think they don't have. They're not allowed a whole lot of fans. Um, definitely less than twelve thousand. I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, they just had fans last week, so. I don't know, man. It's uh, Sunday. You're right, though. Can't come soon enough. Thirty-one twenty-eight Browns. That's that's my prediction. What did you Let's have this it. again? Twenty-six twenty-three Steelers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm fine with that because you know I you know I've completely just like gone off of what my predictions were for this season. Um, I don't know where I like I lost it. I I think <laughs> uh, the Dallas and the Ravens game. After that, I was just like f. I don't care. I'm just going to pick the Browns <laughs> to win every weekend. But if we win this weekend, I'm done with the preseason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, 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 let's just chalk it up to like, uh, we, who, who would have thought? Who would have right. thought? But right. yeah, I mean, unless you got anything else, I think we're we're all good. And this, I'm just excited. I'm going to put a bottle of wine Sunday morning in the refrigerator. No, we got to wait till after. No, but I got to chill it because if, if we win, I'm going right to the oh. bottle right after. Let's just go one and zero. Go one and zero this week. Go one and zero this week. That's a good message. I like it. I like it. You got anything else? Nope. All right, then. Well, thank you all for being here. As always, um, if you could leave a like, subscribe, uh, comment, you know, all that good stuff, we would really appreciate it. We're on video for YouTube and audio for almost – like a lot of podcast sites, Spotify, Apple podcasts, all that stuff. But, you know, if you guys could share this and try to, you know, share with friends and everything, let's get, let's get going. I mean, Browns fans haven't been this like excited for a good reason in a very long time. And so, you know, this is good stuff. And Jeff, as always, thank you for being here. Um, But yeah, this is episode 16 of the Cleveland Pulse podcast and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.